This is a short bonus video that goes with my main double video series. Um, in this video, I'm briefly going to explain how the three rules together force a certain interaction between the points and lines. So as a reminder, these are the three rules that govern projective planes. Any two lines meet at exactly one point, through any two points goes exactly one line, and the side rule, there are at least two lines and at least three points on every line. Okay, so the first fact that we get is that every line must have the same number of points. In other words, every card will automatically have the same number of symbols. To see this, let's just take two lines, and I'll call them L1 and L2. So they intersect somewhere, and so have a common point by rule 1. Now by rule 3, each of these lines has at least three points on it, so we can add on two points onto each of them. Then rule 2 says we could connect the points in this way, through these two blue lines. And then by rule 1, those two blue lines intersect somewhere in this red point I've put. So the rules have already forced the existence of a point outside of both lines. So let's not assume L1 has exactly three points on it, let's add a couple more. Overall, let's label the number of points as n, which with the original point would give us n plus 1 points on L1. Now what we can do is we can draw lines through these extra points through this special red point by rule 2. And by rule 1, these are going to hit L2, meaning we'll have at least n points on L2 apart from the first one. And there can't be any more, because if there were, then we could draw a line through that point and the exterior point to get another point on L1. But we already used up all the points on L1. And this means every line must have the same number of points. Let's say n plus 1 of them to keep in tune with what we just did. This leads us to the second fact. Through every point goes the same number of lines. And remarkably, this number is the same as the number of points per line. In other words, n plus 1. This means that if you want four symbols on every card, then automatically every symbol will appear exactly four times. To see this, let's pick a random point, and let's consider any line not going through it. This line has n plus 1 points on it, and by rule 1, this generates an equal number of lines going through the point of interest. Similarly to before, there can't be any more lines going through this point, because if there were, it would generate another point on the first line. But there's no such thing. As a result, the number of points on that line is the same as the number of lines through the exterior point. But of course that point wasn't special, right? Any other point not on my first line would have come to the same conclusion. And therefore all points not on my first line must have the same number of lines going through them. And of course, these points aren't special either. I could just as well have chosen another line as a reference, because all of them have n plus 1 points on them, to deduce that these also have n plus 1 lines going through them. So to conclude, n plus 1 points on each line, and n plus 1 lines through each point. Let's now count the points and lines, or in other words, how many symbols and cards you will want to have. Take a point, so one point so far. Out of it come n plus 1 lines. On each of these lines, there are n other points, because one of them has already been counted. So we have an additional n plus 1 lots of n points. Can there be any other points? Well, no. Because as before, that would produce a new line going through our first point by rule 2. But we've already used up all the lines coming from there. So we're done. There must be n plus 1 times n plus 1 points, or in other words, through basic algebra, n squared plus n plus 1 points. A very similar argument works to show that the number of lines, unsurprisingly now, is the same. Try to figure this out yourself. And that's the conclusion we wanted to reach.